people explained our efforts to make the single instance of Redis to work better. 2.2 is something like a monument to how much Redis 2.0 sucked. <laughs> because <laughs> if we, in many data sets, are improving memory footprint fi five or on ten times, obviously there was something wrong in the past version, no? <laughs> and uh, this is one aspect of our, our fight to make less uh, better. There is another side that is clusters. Clusters are uh, a more complex topic b because I think uh, there is no cluster solution that doesn't suck. So wh what we can do with our best efforts is to make it as pragmatic as possible. <coughs> also, I must admit that the clustering, the no SQL key value uh, horizontal distributed hash tables was very boring because everybody was doing it with good practice, uh, computer science, cap <laughs> theorem. So we took the exactly opposite path, <laughs> trying to do things like, uh, okay, let's try all this will work. Ah, no, this doesn't work. So we <laughs> are, <coughs> of course, we are always under the same theoretical box. So cap, we, we, we will, uh, uh, feel the effects of, of uh, CAP and other uh, uh, complexity problems that we have in the message passing uh, in every, every part of our cluster. But uh, uh, our, our try is to, instead of start from theory, to start with a pragmatic approach. Uh, and, uh, well, the first of these pragmatic approaches is that uh, the, the main idea of the World Redis cluster is that consistency is more interesting than resistance to net splits. Okay, so this is the, our big, big idea. <coughs> okay, this is how our Redis cluster looks like. There are nodes, every node is connected to each other node, and there are clients. A few interesting things. These nodes do doesn't speak the same protocol that client will use to talk to nodes. It's a different protocol in a different port. It's a binary protocol designed to be fast and small. Because with the protocol we export to our clients, we care a lot that it's simple to uh, implement, it's simple to understand. But in the node-to-node -node protocol, it's our business. So we can make it as hard as possible to get uh, it <laughs> as better as possible. Uh, and to, to have a simple protocol played a huge role in the first days of Redis. Because uh, uh, we had a long list of clients uh, after two weeks, something that's not exactly common. Uh, instead, we use a binary <laughs> protocol. Actually, there is an error there, because it's not TCP-based port uh, uh, plus uh, 1,000 is 10,000 in the final uh, implementation. Final uh, today. Implementation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another Im very important <coughs> idea of Redis cluster is that there is no node-to-node proxying. Because I think every schema where there is node-to-node -node uh, proxying is going to be slow. It's a matter of fact, if there is, there is routing of messages, uh, why clients should not just contact the right node stride if they can? So we completely abolished, and it was a lot of code, a C code to write to do the proxy. So to, to obtain a bad effect, we had to write a lot of code. It didn't make, make, make sense. OK, what, what nodes talk about? <laughs> That's interesting, because they gossip a lot. OK, our gossip implementation is very easy. Basically, uh, from every second, every node, check the list of other connected nodes, and check uh, the ones that uh, have uh, been idle too much time. Oh, it's a lot of time I don't ping uh, C node. Let's ping it. 
Both ping and pong uh, packets are the same. Basically, the only difference is the type field. And oh, <coughs> sorry, I have still the flu, post flu. Uh, so, how it is the, um, the the ping and pong packet uh, constructed? It's like uh, a section where I send both in ping and pong my configuration. What is uh, my business? And then there is a gossip section in which I take information I have about random nodes and add this information to inform you of, of other nodes that possibly you are not talking to in, the, in the, the latest seconds. This is very important to reduce the new number of messages sent in the cluster and in general to carry more information because when you send a CP packet, if you are under the MTU sides, all the data is for free. If you send one byte or uh, five, 500 bytes, it's the same because the physical frame is the same size. So we try to push as much information as we can in this TCP frame. Also, every node in the ping pong request exchange the config uh, uh, signature in order to understand for a node if there is a desync in the configuration. <coughs> Another fundamental idea of Redis cluster is the idea that the key space is split in many different parts. These uh, parts are a fixed number of uh, 4096. So every single node will hold a subset of these uh, hash slots. And when you rehash, re to do the resharding, to shard in a different way, you need to move at least an hash, an hash slot. You can move half hash slot. It's our atomic unit in the cluster. It's trivial to compute what hash slot a key will belong to. It's just CRC 16 of the key modulo 4096. Okay. Nodes are, are all connected together. Every node has a TCP connection to every other node. So if there are 10 nodes, every node will have nine uh, open connect, outgoing connections. <coughs> but not really all the nodes are the same because there is no, a, node, a kind of node that is a master node and a kind of node that is a slave node. Slave can promote to master if master is starting to have problems, of course. <coughs> this means that our, re uh, our ability to resist to failures of nodes is limited to uh, the number of replicas we have. So in this configuration, up to two nodes can go down and nothing wrong will happen. But uh, actually, we can get much more lucky than this and just all the replicas will go down or in general at least one node per e for every hash slot will survive and the cluster will, go, will stay up but the strict guarantee here is that two nodes can go down without problems. <coughs> this design that seems like uh, random, actually uh, there are very important uh, uh, ideas that support this design. The first of our ideas <coughs> is that to create a key value distributed hash table is a much simpler business if you have just key value, that is a string. We have complex data types. So for instance, if we take uh, like other databases are doing uh, the same list in two different nodes updated simultaneously and there is a net split when there is the merge again we have to understand how to merge this list that's composite of these different push and pop this problem was very hard and as you can know there is no real uh, way to do the merging uh, without help from the application if it's a trivial value, you can say, okay, let's take the younger of the, these values. It's, if it's a list, you can re reason like this. 
So you needed very complex application level managing. So we skipped completely the problem and just a single node is the master node for a single key. Then there are the slaves, the, the slaves don't accept right. So our not, not, uh, we uh, avoided to resist to net splits because the gain is huge. It's a consistent cluster, not eventually consistent. And in the case of Redis, it was just uh, actually almost the only sane solution <coughs> because of our big data types. <coughs> and another important point is that nodes do just the minimal work they can do. Every other work is performed using a command line tool that's called re uh, Redis Trib. Using Redis Trib, you can set up new clusters, you, you, we will see. But uh, the, the nodes will just do the minimal work needed. Okay, so if there is no proxying, all this is going to work from the point of view of the client because we avoided to put too much complexity up to the client. Uh, let's start with a dummy client, a client that is very minimal support. Let's think <coughs> that I will release a Redis cl cluster tomorrow. In a week, what kind of client we can, uh, can implement? We can implement dummy clients. Dummy client is very easy. It takes a list of nodes and will issue the request against a random one, a random node. It will say, get foo and the node, if foo belongs to an hash slot that's not up to this node, it will replay, no? Moved into 8, that's the hash slot of the key I'm requesting, and the IP address and port of the node that is responsible for this key, okay? So the client will simply reconnect to the other node and ask again, if uh, in the middle of this uh, uh, process there is a change in the net cluster layout, simply the next proxy will replay again, no, I am no longer the right one, move it in, blah, and it will reconnect again. Smart clients will do <coughs> things in a very different way. To start, they will try to take persistent connections with the nodes. At startup, they will ask cluster hints that is, give me the configuration as it is now. When they get the moved uh, message, they will update the in-memory table they are taking. So a smart client will, most of the time, directly address the right node. And this should already sound in your mind as horizontally scalable, completely horizontally scalable, because every node uh, is co connected to every uh, uh, node, every client to every node. Okay, it's up to the client how much persistent connections uh, it, won't, uh, it will try to, to take. But uh, anyway, it will uh, directly address the right node, so the performance and latency will be the one of the single Redis instance that we know already. <coughs> <coughs> okay, this is just uh, what I said. Okay, the interesting part. So let's add a server. What happens if I add a new server to this cluster? It's very easy. Uh, see, redistrib, I, I will type something like redistrib add uh, node and then reshard uh, a few keys in this new node. So redistrib we an analyze and uh, we'll, we'll pick uh, hash slot 7 to move us first hash slot. It will just connect to C.